I'm Alison Seeley and I'm Professor of Applied Linguistics at Lancaster University in the UK. And this short video is about the concept of biosemiotics. My research and teaching is in the area of linguistics and there's obviously a lot of overlap between language and human-animal studies. The main area of overlap has probably been up till now between the um, different forms of communication of humans and other animals and the ways in which various animals are able to approach or not the same kind of communication as, as human beings do. But if we think about language as only one mode of communication, we're approaching the field of, bio, of semiotics. And by semiotics, we mean the study of signs and symbols and how these are interpreted. So we go beyond vocabulary and grammar um, and the components of language into other sorts of sign systems, including obviously the visual, but the involvement of all the other senses, and in the case of, of uh, humans and some other animals, cultural and social behaviour and how that's interpreted and so on. Now the bio prefix in biosemiotics points to the fact that the exchange of information is relevant to all forms of life and all forms of life are involved to some extent in the interpretation of signs. So people are also claiming that um, sign processes actually characterise and are very fundamental to the very nature of life itself. If we accept that idea, this presents a profound challenge to the notion of human exceptionalism. And I think there are two ways that um, biosemiotics challenges human exceptionalism. We can accept that human language has its own specific properties, that there are words for abstract concepts, that grammar has uh, complex structures uh, that are peculiar to human languages, probably. And then there are all the affordances of technological devices developed by humans for communication, from writing and printing right through to the digital media that we use today. But at the same time, we can recognise that there are continuities between the different ways in which people, in, in which different living organisms interpret signs. And if communication is vital to the survival of all living organisms, then we can see continuities across all the species, including even microorganisms, because we see that communication is fundamental to survival and that it takes many different forms. And the second sense in which I think biosemiotics undermines human exceptionalism is that it acknowledges the interconnectedness of living things. So it's actually a challenge to the idea that each organism is discrete um, and separate from all others. And indeed Jesper Hofmeier, who's one of the key proponents of biosemiotics, actually claims that the human being may be the product of a collaboration between possibly hundreds of trillions of bacteria. So we're looking now at life as process rather than as product and this also challenges the idea of different species as completely separate from each other as well as of individuals as being completely separate from each other because of the interconnections and the, the importance of the exchange of information. So I think that one of the challenges for human animal studies is actually a linguistic one. Everything that we do, and particularly as academics when we exchange information with each other, we tend to do through language. All our descriptions of ourselves, of the uh, other animals that we study, our perceptions, our experiences, all tend to be uh, communicated about through language. And even biosemiotics itself uses linguistic metaphors when we talk about things like communication and codes and messages and information. <clears throat> so my research, which is into how people talk and write about animals and not the non-human, poses this key question, which is how human languages can facilitate or how they may constrain our abilities to understand the life worlds of beings with very different experiences of biosemiosis. Thank you for listening.